Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I'm Mike Fuson. Uh, this is part of our extended Tech Talk series uh, with our partner, Halo ITSM, and I'm joined uh, by the uh, infamous uh, uh, and certainly famous uh, Tom Petley from Halo. Tom, it's always great to see you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for the intro. <laughs> So one of the things that, as Tom and I have been talking about different topics to share uh, with you guys out there, um, one of the things we had talked about was maybe a couple of, of specific industries that uh, Halo is used extensively in. Um, and one of them is in the university sector. Um, and that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I've worked with a lot of our university customers in implementing uh, IT service management solutions over the uh, past, uh, we'll just say, couple of decades that I've been uh, uh, working with customers. Um, and uh, one of the things that's always interesting uh, in a university environment that's a little bit different, um, in fact, a lot different from a lot, of organ a lot of corporate organizations is that they have multiple constituencies that are being served. So they're serving students, they're serving faculty, and they're serving staff. Um, and what services um, and really uh, elements within those services that each of those groups is eligible for is different. Um, and you also then have the added layer of an individual could be more than one of those personas, more than one of those types of customers, because you can have a student who's also a staff member because uh, they have a job on campus. Um, or um, in, in many cases, we've seen where they're all three, you know, like a graduate student. A graduate student may have a job on campus, but they're also a, a adjunct faculty member um, as well. So they have to be able to request the services that are necessary for them in whatever roles they have. Um, and it creates a complexity um, for a lot of customers because you want the service catalog to be limited to what your persona or personas allow. And one of the things that's always so exciting working with Halo is the way that the platform's designed, that's, you know, it, it is something that I've taught, we've talked about before on other other calls where you'll go, oh, well, doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> um, and it's because of the, uh, of the care and design you guys have done with Halo really being very customer driven uh, that that flexibility is there. So talk to me, Tom, a little bit about you know, some of the things you've seen within the universities in dealing with these unique challenges that universities face. Yeah, it's a really interesting topic there. And you've, yeah, you described it really well with the different roles that, uh, yeah, different personas that people have. Um, I was going to add one more in there as well, which is maybe pensions and people that, when you're actually looking at a local login, someone that's uh, not necessarily within your domain anymore and no longer, um, yeah, no longer managed by the universities. So there's lots of different, um, Kind of personas that at universities is quite unique to them which you don't always see in other kind of IT departments um, so yeah in terms of how we handle it we're, we, we we do like to push the self-service we think it's a really important um, vehicle for kind of managing the service of uh, that we offer um, and in terms of that it's we always pull the or we, we always use a central source of data so it'd normally be for the, for the users that is so it'd normally be your identity management platform something like AD, Azure AD, possibly a homegrown system as well. And we like to pull traits from there. So we're not kind of managing it separately in Halo. We're always using what you've already got. So it might be an OU, it might be um, a group, an Azure AD group or something like that, that you do use to manage those different personas. And all we're doing is when we are kind of importing or syncing those users from the different platforms, we're gonna bring across those traits. Then we're going to use those traits to then um, control the access on the self-service or control the access if you are logging on behalf of the user. Um, so it's very much driven from things you've already got. We're not we're not we're not going crazy here. <laughs> it's something that we're. That's why yeah, I think maybe Mike's referencing that we we like to think everyone does these kind of things. It's something that feels quite simple for us that you just pull those traits across and then you use those traits to um, control the access. Right. Well, you're 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 able to manage the service catalog as a complete service catalog, and then define what elements in the service catalogs are available to which roles, personas, whatever uh, uh, you know, word you want to apply to it. 
Um, I hadn't really had hadn't thought about the the, the what well, well, I sometimes see it as alumni, right? Yeah. So somebody that has been a student there um, at some point and may still be eligible for certain services from the university, um, and that that creates a whole nother layer <laughs> of complexity um, because generally they're available services within a service catalog are much more limited. Incredibly than, limited normally, yeah. Right, but being able to manage that in a single service catalog, um, in a single you know, frame structure, and literally tick off which ones are available to whom, um, makes it very, very easy to manage, right? And, that, and that's really, you know, when you get down to it, uh, in so many of our conversations, that's the core essence of what you've designed and what Halo continues to do when you look at the new release that's coming out um, and everything else you guys have done is just really that customer focus. How do we make it easy for our end customers to be able to interact with us? Uh, it, it, because everything starts um, in, in, in a good design with the self-service you know, self portal. Um, I'd say so, yeah. But also making it easy for uh, your, your technicians uh, who are possibly taking a call to be able to understand that Mike who's calling in is, is an alumnus, mm -hmm. not a faculty, you know, uh, a faculty or staff member. Um, or, you know, and, and as a result, um, you know, what am I able to avail myself of um, from a uh, uh, solutions uh, and services that are offered by the university? Um, so it all starts with kind of what, what what we talk about so often with Halo as the the, the, the starting point for everything, which is that customer experience. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Just just to add to that as well, it's not every university is the same. They all kind of have a similar foundation, similar um, basis, but there's always different um, intricacies behind each one. So it might be that maybe one multiple campuses or slightly different structure to how the internal workings of the university work and uh, that's why we kind of have a we like to recommend an out-of-the-box setup we like to say these are best practice processes but we do also make it configurable so you can then take those best practices and yeah add certain restrictions so yeah maybe this campus can request this additional service or this these types of user can request that so we're kind of very much taking an out-of-the-box approach but um yeah tailoring it towards a different university or or whatever the higher education institute is. Well, Tom, as always, these conversations are fun uh, and, and I hope educational for uh, uh, folks that are out there. Um, we look forward to uh, being able to share Halo uh, with uh, those of you out there that are watching. Um, feel free to hit the Excalibur Data Systems website and sign up for a free trial um, for Halo ITSM, fully functional. Uh, and you can get your feet wet and then we'd Tom and I would love to talk to you about what we can do for you leveraging the Halo ITSM platform. Tom, as always, thanks for joining me. Brilliant. Thanks, Mike.